What? Prosecutor Von Karma, you mean? No, I heard it's his successor or something. Successor? Heh, <laughs> suck. Manfred Von Karma was really a sinister man. A really sinister, same thing. He pulled all sorts of nasty tricks, also he could win. He was a man obsessed with the word perfection. He had a perfect record for 40 long years. Who knows what sort of dirty tricks he used to get each of those guilty verdicts. And now his successor. I wonder what kind of person they will turn out to be. It's no good. Mystic Maya. Pearly. You showed up. Thanks for coming all this way. Oh, I was really worried about you. Hey, where's your mother? Didn't you two come together? Mother is watching over the trainees. She said they have training for two days straight with no breaks. Huh? Then you came all by yourself? Yup. I stuck out of the manor and followed a map. Don't tell me you walked all the way here. Of course not. I ran. That's... Oh, I can't. Oh my, if it takes two hours by train. Oh man. Pearly, what about the train? Huh? What's a train? I give up. It's Tom, isn't it? Um, I'm really scared. What if Von Karma tries to do something to me? At least I know Mr. Edgeworth would be nicer to me than Von Karma. Mr. Edgeworth? Who's that? Oh, he's Nick's rival. Well, he's also a friend. I still remember him as though I'd seen him only yesterday. Every trial was a scorchingly fierce battle until the very end. It was always back and forth with them, but when you're rivals for life... Maya! Please don't mention that name ever again. Huh? But why, Nick? I'm... I'm sorry, Maya, I forgot you don't know. He... he's... he's gone. He's not coming back. What? Wait, wait a second, what's that supposed to mean? Court will commence briefly, please proceed into the courtroom. Let's go. Now's not the time to talk about that anyway. Nick? Edgeworth not being in this game was a lot more jarring when From the Ashes didn't exist, because that got added way later after the trilogy had been released, so it was just like, oh, all right, we had the thing with Von Karma and Edgeworth's gone. There's a little bit more of a connection now. Court is now in session for the trial of Maya Fey. Are the prosecution and defense prepared? There she is. What's with this kid? Ahem, Mr. Wright, are you prepared? Huh? Uh, uh yes, Your Honor. Why does he always seem mad at me? Mr. Phoenix Wright. You must be a little shocked because I am a woman, correct? Hold on, so she's the famed successor to Prosecutor Von Karma? I am Franziska Von Karma, the prodigy. I see. I gave up a promising career in Germany and came to this country for one sole reason. Revenge. Revenge. Is this about her father, Manfred Von Karma? Um, if it's something of a personal nature, I'm sure you can... Ow! I'm talking. If you interrupt again, my whip will do the speaking for me. Please speak with your mouth like a normal person, I beg of you. Yow? Make no mistake, I will defeat you. Prepare to go down, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Prosecutor Von Karma, your opening statement, please. Those of Von Karma blood have only one fate, and that is perfection. The defendant, Maya Fey, will find no escape from her guilt on my watch. Very well. What is the defense's position? Your Honor, does the defense wish to enter a plea of not guilty? Yes. Foolish fool who foolishly dreams of foolish dreams. Ten minutes, I give the defense ten minutes before it changes its plea. That's right, I'll have you running for the justified self-defense plea in no time. Justified self-defense. A plea usually reserved when a person unintentionally kills in defense of himself. 
We could very easily make a solid case that it was self-defense, but... Could we really? The defense stands by its plea of not guilty, Your Honor. Because to plead justified self-defense is to say you did kill someone. How foolish. If that's how you want to play it, Mr. Phoenix Wright, then I shall now call the first witness. She's just as scary as her father. Like father, like daughter, I suppose. Witness, your name and occupation. Yes, sir, my name is Dick Gumshoe. I'm a detective at the local precinct. <laughs> yeah! Get to the point already. Explain to the court the details of this murder. Yes, sir. Um, if everyone would please look at this map. But does this really, you know, it's, I, I suppose. The channeling chamber has, it just seems so weird to have a map of one room when there's like very little in the room. The channeling chamber has no windows and the door was locked shut. At the time of the murder, only the victim and the defendant were in the room. What were they doing in there? Uh, they, well, they, they were channeling a, a, a spirit, sir. Channeling a spirit? That's quite the look of disbelief there, Your Honor. <clears throat> anyway, a few minutes a after the channeling started, gunshots were heard coming from inside the room, sir. A few of the witnesses broke the door down and rushed into the room. And uh, that's when they found that the victim was already dead, correct? Mm, I believe this is one of the most open and shut cases I've ever presided over. Is that not the case with everything we ever have here? It always seems so. So how was the victim killed? I was about to get to that. Stop wasting my time then. Hold on real quick, have we been given an autopsy report? No. The correct cause of death was a pistol shot to the forehead, sir. The shot was fired from point blank range. But before the victim was shot, sir, he was stabbed in the chest. The wound was very severe, but not enough to cause instantaneous death. The murderer used the pistol to finish the victim off after the stabbing. Hmm. So the victim was stabbed before being shot. This is the victim's autopsy report, sir. After being stabbed in the chest, he was shot in the forehead at point blank. The court accepts it into evidence. Mr. Wright, you may quit now question the witness. The right cause of death was a pistol shot to the forehead. The murder weapon, Detective Gumshoe, whose pistol was it? It was the victim's. The victim? Now why would he have... Why would he have a pistol? Who cares? The point that you are missing is whose fingerprints are on that pistol. If you're not already paying attention to that, then I suggest you start. Fingerprints? There were fingerprints? Along with the victims, the defendant, my affairs were also on the grip, sir. Hmm, so the defendant's fingerprints were left on the murder weapon. Ah, I walked right into her hands there. That came on screen, like, kind of early. I thought I was about to get hurt from pressing. Point blank, huh? So about how far away is that, my friend? <laughs> it's anywhere between 12 to 20 inches away. And how do you know he was shot at point blank? The residue. Tisk, tisk, tisk. Mr. Phoenix, right. I grow tired of the foolish foolery of the foolish fools of this foolish country. Excuse me? Gunpowder burn. Gunpowder burn. When someone is shot from point blank, a burn area is left, bu left around the bullet hole. Exploding. Gunpowder exploding is what makes a bullet fire, and that gets real hot, pal. And there were definitely some gunpowder burns left on the victim's forehead. Wow, never knew that. Live and learn, I guess. Yeah, you do know shockingly little about, like, <laughs> anything. <laughs> stabbed. And what was he stabbed with? A fruit knife. I see. And whose knife was it? Looks like it belongs to the face, sir. And of course, Maya Faye's fingerprints are all over it. Hmm, all over it, huh? Look, this does not look good. <laughs> what will you do now, Mr. Phoenix Wright? <laughs> How severe was the wound? If it had been half an inch more to the right, he would have hit the victim's heart. After a stab like that, it's impossible to fight back, let alone stand. 
His testimony makes it sound like Maya had stabbed him with the intent to kill. Are you sure he was stabbed first, then shot? Yep, sure as can be. One look at the wounds and you'd come to the same conclusion too, pal. A fool is a fool who will only listen to the foolish opinions of other foolish fools. A pistol shot to the forehead of point blank is certainly enough to kill instantly. Does it matter then which was first? Think, I mean, yeah. Think, cause, you know, when the person, if he was stabbed after he dead, that's kind of, after he was dead, that's kind of weird, isn't it? Gah, what a pain. That's enough. We have clearly established how the victim was murdered. I brought the two murder weapons with me today. Very well, the court accepts them. Murder weapon was Gray's two shots fired. Bears Maya's and Maya's and Gray's fingerprints. Two fired, huh? Knife. A small fruit knife belongs to the face. Bears Maya's fingerprints. The date and time of death was June 19th at 3.15 p.m. Eyewitnesses claim to have heard two gunshots at this time, and yet he only has one bullet hole in him. And the murder weapons both with the defendant's fingerprints on them. Hmm, this does seem like an open and shut case. Naturally. This is going from bad to worse. As if the summary just now wasn't oversimplifying things to the, the extreme. Your Honor, feel free to slam that little gavel of yours. After all, there's no room left for doubt, is there? There is quite true, Mr. Wright. Yes. Even in the face of all this, do you still wish to plead not guilty? It's the opinion of this court that if you do not justify your plea, you stand to lose. See, just as I promised, Mr. Phoenix Wright. We would change your plea in less than ten minutes. What will you do, Mr. Wright? Will you change to justified self-defense? Because now would be the time to do so. This is your final chance. This is a huge decision. Not guilty. If we plead justified self-defense, we would basically be confessing to murder. After the trial, Maya's life would be ruined, and she'd be labeled a murderer. I can't let that happen. Your Honor. Have you reached a conclusion, Mr. Wright? The defense will not change its plea. We will accept nothing short of complete acquittal. You. You have sealed your fate, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Detective. Y yes sir. Present the final portion of your testimony. The final strike. Um, yes sir. Now, now, see here, proceedings are run by... Eek! Oh yes, of course, oh, go ahead, detective, give your testimony. I think the court would like to hear about the other piece of incriminating evidence. Sorry, pal, but there's an even more incriminating piece of evidence. This is the costume the defendant was wearing at the time of the crime. As you can see, it's covered in blood. It's also got a bullet hole in the sleeve. The defendant attacked and killed a person who, without a doubt, was not fighting back. So this is the costume. There certainly is evidence of a backspray of a backspray of blood on this. This piece directly links my fate to the crime, sir. I see. The court accepts this into evidence. All right, Mr. Wright. Maya's fingerprints are on both murder weapons and blood splatters on her clothes. Could this situation get any worse? What's wrong? You seem to be at a loss. Spuddling. Must you be on the keyboard? Pl please. Thank you. Feel free to sulk off with your tail between your legs, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Please stop calling me by my full name. I'm slamming the coat on the one about not fighting back. Because... So here's the thing also. Can we look at it? Is that a feature yet? No. Um... There's a bullet hole in the sleeve, and it didn't have any burn around it. Objection! Fuck me. Fine, I guess I'll work a little more for it. Because if there's no gunpowder on it, like, they weren't right on top of each other, which seems to imply the person was, you know, shooting at Maya from a distance. In reality, that one must also link up with this hole, but we'll get to that later, presumably. 
He wasn't fighting back. How do you know if he was or wasn't? We can find no evidence the victim put any sort of struggle, pal. Hmm. So did the murderer have a fight with the victim or not? Depending on this, the circumstances around this murder changed drastically. We're in real trouble now. If only I had something to prove the victim did fight back. Yeah, you know. That's uh, exactly what I tried to do right there. Alright, what if I use the screen? Because that also, because of their positions, means that he has to have fired at Maya. No. Am I skipping a step here? Like, what I want to prove, what I'm trying to prove is that he must have shot at Maya because there's a hole in the coat and a hole in the floor and a hole in the fucking uh, screen. All right, I guess we'll just press on stuff. Why didn't you say so in your testimony earlier? Uh, you're kind of scary today, you know, pal. Come now, Mr. Wright, there's no need for that kind of attitude in my court. All right, just please stop glaring at me like that. Maya's costume? Yeah, she was wearing this when, she, when we arrested her. Maya, she's wearing her channeling costume today, too. Is she not allowed to wear anything else? This blood on the costume. Lab results show that it was the victim's blood. Hmm, so there is blood from the victim on the defendant's clothes. Definitely not good. So were there any other clues you could glean from this piece of evidence? Oh, well... If you must change the topic, then the good detective here must testify again. But too bad, not enough time, let's move on. Ah, oh, yes, Miss Valkamer is perfectly correct. Now even the judge is on her side. Press further. Why is Miss Von Karma suddenly putting up resistance? There must be a reason as to why she suddenly threw out an objection like that. Yeah. There must be something about this costume. I just have to look harder. This one karma's logic is perfect. There's no way for you to poke a hole in it. <sighs> Looks like my time is up. There's one little thing. Your Honor. Actually, there is something very wrong with this piece of evidence. Now, the problem here is that we're probably going to end up incriminating Maya even more before we get anywhere with this. <laughs> what are you talking about, pal? Where is the problem you're talking about? I've come this far, there's no turning back now. It's right there, brother. I ask the court to please take a look at the sleeve of this costume. The sleeve? There's a tiny hole here. It wasn't really tiny. Uh, oh, but that wasn't in the report. Hold on. What's this around the hole? It smells faintly of gunpowder. Never mind, I guess you just can't see it from this image. Gunpowder? No one ever told me. A hole that smells of gunpowder. It looks like I've found the hole I was looking for. Your Honor, the only logical conclusion you can make is that it must be a bullet hole. Order, order, order. This is a very grave matter. It's best we correct the court record first before anything else. Sorry about that. I guess we messed up, sir. Is she actually smiling? What else is she hiding? Pull yourself together, detective. That tiny hole doesn't change a thing. The strength of the evidence still holds. Continue with your testimony that just now was a fluke, nothing more. How can you say something like that? This is a huge oversight. While I agree it is a mistake on the part of the police, what Prosecutor Von Karma has said is true, the evidence still stands. If you do not find a more definitive problem with the evidence, then... No way. Detective Gumshoe, continue. Now can I slam it on the last thing? Gray. Oh... <laughs> That makes me so mad, dude. <laughs> Detective Gumshoe. Yes? <laughs> Having you call me by my full name is kind of a weird feeling. You said that you that my client killed a person who, without a doubt, was not fighting back. Yeah, I did. 
Then what, may I ask, is the bullet hole in police oversight supposed to mean? Uh, what does it mean? I'll tell you what it means. It means that the victim had been f had fired off a shot. Is this what it means to not fight back? Ugh, you're right. It seems you're correct. If the victim had tried to shoot the defendant, then it would change everything. All right, the wind seems to be shifting. Huh. What's with that, are you finished yet laugh? Are you finished yet, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Miss Von Karma, it seems that Maya Fey was shot by the victim. However, that is only grounds enough to support a justified self-defense plea. That is correct. But I'm sure you remember, Your Honor, what the defense clearly said. They rejected self justified self-defense and pleaded not guilty. Why, that's right! Which means, the defense has yet to prove anything at all. No. Well, yes, that's true. Furthermore, just the fact that there is a bullet hole in the costume is not enough to substantiate even a plea of justified self-defense. How so? Well, because it does, you know, he could have shot the gun in self-defense. You know, this is the problem. Don't just stand there. Hurry up and tell the court what transpired that day. With the new information we acquired added in, of course. Huh? You mean by myself? You want me to put together this scenario all by myself? Ah! Yes, sir, right away, sir. During the channeling, the defendant saw our chance to stab the victim in the chest. Of course, the victim used the last of his strength to fight back, sir. While the two were fighting, the victim took out his gun. The victim took a shot, but because they were too close, he missed. The defendant then picked up on the picked up on the opening, took the victim's gun, and ended it. Hmm, this scenario you have put together does make sense. Yes, sir. Well, Mr. Wright? On the surface, it does seem to make sense. However, I won't give up that easily. Please refrain from refrain from glaring at me like that. Now then, your cross-examination, please. Okay. There's quite a difference in height between Dr. Gray and the defendant. Add in body strength and it seems unlikely the defendant could have stabbed the victim. That is utterly irrelevant. To be honest, fucking horrible argument to make. It doesn't matter how strong or big the person is if they're being stabbed. It's not like we're fucking in Dragon Ball Z. The knife isn't going to bounce off of your skin. The size difference between the assaulter and the defender makes no difference when you have a knife. Objection! You think you can get away with such flimsy reasoning, Mr. Phoenix, right? Maya Fey was in the middle of channeling, was she not? When channeling with the Karine channeling technique, the medium physically changes. With the nurse's build, the defendant could have easily been a match for the doctor. Irrelevant. I don't believe it. She even studied up on the Karine channeling technique. Like I said before, I am perfect. Um, uh, about what you were talking about, I didn't quite get it. Uh, never mind, let's continue with the testimony. So he was stabbed, but the stab wound didn't kill him. But if you think about the blood loss, he was probably hurt pretty bad. I mean, I'm pretty sure like a testimony ago you said it was like impossible for him to fight back after a wound like that. How badly hurt would you say he was? Actually, I went to give blood the other day. And afterward, I felt a little lightheaded and dizzy. I guess the damage was maybe uh, about ten times the dizziness. Ah! Z uh, sorry. Great. Where in the world did that pistol come from? Looks like the victim, Dr. Gray, had specifically bought it for that day. But a handgun? He got it off the black market about two days before the murder. Why did Dr. Gray bring a gun? Was he taking precautions against something? So, you're saying the bullet hole in this costume was made then? Sorry, pal, but yeah, that's what I think. The two of them were already fighting when a shot was fired. Maya, I'm really glad you weren't hurt. 
Oh fuck, I didn't. Done the wrong thing. Maya's never fired a gun before in her life. The victim had already taken off the safety. With the safety off, even an amateur like you can fire it just by pulling the trigger. Even me, I wonder. Now do you understand? Avon Karma's logic is perfect. Okay. So. Can I get... Like... I don't know, I, I was expecting more there. Like, the thing is, he said it smells of gunpowder, but it doesn't... Like, it just doesn't look burned. You know? Like, it doesn't look like this was shot point blank. There's no gunpowder around it, even though it smells of it, apparently. There's none there. And it's not burned, either. Okay, great. When the judge said it smelt of gunpowder earlier, that threw me off, but like, it just didn't look like anything, you know? Missing the tiny hole in this costume will be the prosecution's undoing. Eh? What do you mean? This little hole has actually created a huge hole in your testimony. Explain yourself, Mr. Wright. You said the two of them were fighting when the victim fired his gun at point blank. If that were true, then where is the gunpowder burn on this costume? Gunpowder burn? This is what you testified earlier. When something is shot from point blank, a burn area is left around the bullet hole. Oh! But there's not a single trace of gunpowder burn on this costume. That is a very good point. And what exactly does this mean? It means that when the shot was fired, they were standing apart from each other. Hmm. I'm disappointed, Mr. Phoenix Wright. You think you can punch a hole in my logic with that? With wishy-washy thinking like that, anyone can explain anything away. Then I implore you to disprove my line of thinking. Let's see. In the middle of their fight, the victim pushed the defendant away, and it was then that they were separated, then he fired. How was that? He was supposed to be, like, barely able to move. As if that was even possible. According to testimony, the wound from the stabbing was very severe. The victim would not have had the strength to push the defendant very far after that. Well, then... That's right, the defendant must have pushed the victim away. After stabbing him, she must have put space between the doctor and herself. Why? He's got a gun, she doesn't. What does she stand to- He's got a gun, she's got a knife. Why would he- she create distance? And then while she was preparing to strike again, the doctor took his shot. There, that should satisfy even you. No, that doesn't make any sense at all. Shut the fuck up. She had a knife, he had a gun. Why would she back off after getting into him? What do you think? I must be careful, I can't afford to make a mistake here. Concentrate and think. Something doesn't make sense. There's a fatal flaw in her argument, Your Honor. Fatal? Flaw? Yow. Very interesting. I would love to see where this flaw is. Show me something that contradicts my explanation. There has to be a snag in her explanation somewhere. She puts some distance between them before rushing to make the final blow. And when she was about to strike, the doctor took his shot. There must be a piece of evidence that contradicts this line of thinking. I mean, do you want the bullet hole? My instinct is just to put the knife on the table because I'm so... Like, it just doesn't make, like, any sense to me why someone would want to create distance. Like, why would Maya ever push the guy with the gun away when she has a knife? But I have a suspicion it might actually be this hole. This is the piece of evidence that destroys your logic. What is that? A folding screen? I would like to point the point the court's attention to the hole in the folding screen. Ah! It looks like you already know what I'm talking about. I mean, this does also work, but I'm annoyed at having to justify this in the first place, given how patently absurd it is for the attacker to do that. Who? Where? What? Mr. Wright, your explanation, please. Are these two really that clueless? The bullet went through the defendant's sleeve first, then the folding screen. It passed through at a height of approximately 8 inches off the ground, which means... 
When the shot was fired, Maya, I mean the defendant, was not getting ready to strike, but was actually squatting low to the ground. Order, order. This changes everything. The problem is, and this is the problem, that this isn't actually proving anything that helps us. Because all this is really doing is again leading to a justified self-defense plea, which we have not made. So this will, you know, we're going to go through this whole gotcha moment and then Von Karma is just going to go, and again, <laughs> you know, remember to stay hydrated also. The victim, Dr. Gray, was here when he was sh fired the shot. And the bullet hit this folding screen. It hit at this location about eight inches off the ground. At this time, the defendant was in this area. Somewhere around here. Uh, the judge's face is scratch what? But that's exactly where, you, where it was put earlier. The defendant was in that... This is where it was earlier. So, like what, like, right fucking there? What, where do you want? Are we saying she was fucking behind the screen? What do you mean? This is where she was earlier. That <laughs> they were, this was supposed to be during the channeling. While she was squatting low to the ground, would have been there. What, do you want me to say she was over here? Behind the folding screen? Ah. This... I mean... This just seems like a bit of a strange assumption to suddenly make, doesn't it? <laughs> I guess there is a hole there. But it's also like, we're inferring a lot about this, aren't we? Because we're saying that the victim was in the center of the room. We've no way of knowing that. And... Like, with the way we understand things currently, presumably he would have pulled out the gun during the channeling, thus kicking off this series of events, which would have meant that, you know, it just seems a bit of a strange leap to suddenly say, oh, she was behind the folding screen. I guess there is a bullet hole there, but at the same time, it seems more reasonable to make an assumption that, like, she was in the channeling, he was stood up, and, like, a bit off to the side when he fired down at her, you know? The victim and his attacker were fighting, were they not? Then what would the attacker be doing all the way back there? Uh... Besides which, if the attacker was behind the folding screen, how would the victim even know where to shoot? It's obviously impossible. Yeah, I guess so. <sighs> What's done is done, I should focus on my- Okay, so you don't want me to say that. <sighs> what do you want me to say? I've already clicked around here. Like what? Right fucking there? I don't understand what you want me to say here. Like right in front of the screen where it's blocked off? Near the folding screen. Wait a second. We know... We know the defendant was close to the ground based on the height of the bullet hole. But how can you gauge the distance from that? Isn't it possible the defendant was standing much closer to the victim? This seems like the obvious assumption. <laughs> That's impossible. But why? You, of all people, should know the answer to that question, Miss Von Karma. If she was shot from somewhere closer, there would be gunpowder burns present. That's so far away on the diagram. <laughs> oh, I'm mad. What do you mean? She was... That was not, like, right fucking on top of her. Point blank is, like, touching the person. However, there's nothing of the sort around the bullet hole of this costume. I disagree with this logic. <laughs> I don't agree. I'm pretty sure if they were that, like, point blank is, like, basically touching the person, you know, to burn it. I don't know. I don't agree with this one. I think this is a strange assumption. I think this is a bit of a strange assumption to make, given what we know right now. <laughs> Curse you, Mr. Phoenix, right, you? Hmm. I, um, 
I've been so... I've been... <laughs> All right, so we have made several assumptions <laughs> that don't make any sense. You know, first we're like, oh, the victim pushed the attacker. Or the Maya pushed... Maya had a knife and pushed the guy with the gun away to create distance. Oh, right, obviously. Yeah, that makes fucking sense, doesn't it? Like, all right, obviously Maya was over by the folding screen because she got shot at. Well, couldn't she have just kind of been anywhere when she was shot at? No, obviously not. <laughs> it just seems a bit weird. I believe that it is now proven that the defendant was standing away from the victim when he, she was shot at. It's just that, like... Is there to there? You're telling me there to there is point blank? I don't fucking buy it, dude. But do you think this has changed the defendant's situation? It changes everything. Honestly, Your Honor, this changes everything. The prosecution has claimed that the defendant was aiming to kill by stabbing. If that were true, delivering the final strike with the knife would be ideal. However, where and what was the defendant doing at that time? Squatting all the way by the folding screen? Exactly. If Maya Faye was the real murderer, why would she be by the folding by the folding screen instead of preparing to strike? Why would this is such an unnecessary amount of logic? You could have made the same point by saying why would the one with the knife push the one with the gun away? <laughs> Upon further consideration, it does make very little sense. Yeah, I figured there had to be a reason. Figuring things out and proving the logic behind everything is your job. No, it's not. It's, that's not the police's job, really. The, you know, it's more that that's the prosecution's job. The, the police's job is just to collect the evidence. All right, with this, the rest of the trial should be in the back. No, because she's still gonna go, it doesn't change actually anything. <laughs> Blast radius of disaster. You are such a smart man, Mr. Phoenix Wright. To think that you'd be able to take a completely hopeless case to this point. Now I know why Papa had a tough time with you. Hmm, you amuse me. Ugh, of all the things to inherit, why did it have to be that smarmy smile? Smart? I've never heard anyone outside of the UK say smarmy. Detective. How dare you damage my perfect logic. <laughs> How is it all my fault? You can start by repairing your standing by first removing that three-strand goatee. Oh, and rest assured, your punishment will come later. Punishment? <laughs> it should have been me! Well then, Your Honor, I think I've had, I've had all I can take of the defendant's, this detective's face. I think it's time to call in the next witness. Next witness? That's gotta be Lada. Mm, very well. The court will take a five-minute recess. After we reconvene, we will hear from the next witness. I didn't like multiple parts of that. <laughs> I'm kind of mad, to be honest. First it's like, oh, I'm gonna present this because the hole obviously doesn't make sense. No, you fucked up. All right, I'll press on this. Okay, now present the evidence on the exact same spot you presented it earlier. God, fucking damn it. <laughs> Whew, that was a close one. I know you were giving it your all to defend me, but I could feel the death penalty hanging in the air. I felt like I was pretty close to dying myself. But you were wonderful out there. You listened carefully, made theories, get, went with some wild assumptions, and tricked everyone into believing you. To be honest, I do think we tricked them, yes. Because, I don't know, man, there's a lot of other positions you could have been in, I feel. <laughs> we're tricked. That must be the lawyer's secret technique, right? By the way, is the next witness who I think it is? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's a lot of hair. Uh, guess there's no escaping her, huh? Remember, Nick, you promised to save me. If you lose, me and my sister's ghosts will haunt- will come after you and haunt you. Your sister? Are you talking about Mystic Mia? Yeah, do you remember her, Pearling? My sister was a super good lawyer. She was also Nick's teacher. Oh, I didn't know that. Court will now reconvene. Now, the first order of POW! I don't want to hear it, old man. After I call my witness, sit there quietly and watch like a good little boy. Uh, yes, sir. Bring in the photographer who witnessed the channeling. 
Witness your name and occupation, if you please. Hey, Phoenix, how you doing? Just fine. Sorry about this. Didn't exactly have a choice, you know. Yowza. Name and occupation. I, I declare, what in tarnation? Hey, Judge, this is a violence against my fair self. That's fine. That's fine. That ain't fine. That's a whip. Yeah. There's no need for foolish outcries from foolishly foolish fools. Just hurry up and testify about what happened on the day of the murder. I haven't even gotten to say my name and job yet. The name's on a heart. Fair and old photographer, and I'm here to testify. Now, now, let's all be one big happy family, okay? Mom and Dad are fighting again. Only the Doc and the Defendant went into the channeling chamber. We were waiting outside the door, and then bang, we hear this gunshot. Mr. Lawyer there broke the door down, and we rushed into the room. Inside was the dead victim and the Defendant, waving a pistol around. I swear, other than those two, there was no one else in the room. And did you take a picture of the scene right after the murder took place? Reckon course? Eh? Excuse me? Reckon course! It's short for, you reckon? Of course I did. Yeah. Does it look like I care? Just hurry up and show your picture to the court. The moment of truth, what will be in that picture? Let's see here. This here is the picture. Well, now it seems even fucking weirder to assume that they were over there in that position, doesn't it? It would certainly seem that only the defendant and victim were in the room. Are you ready, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Oh, well, she, she took two photos, though. Can I see the other photo? I will clear all doubt about Maya through this cross-examination. Just watch me. I would like to see the second photo. Eh, let's just press on everything. Because I don't really know where to start. Was it really only those two that went in? What are you blabbering about? You were there too, were you not? The... Uh, why don't you answer that yourself? Was it really just the two of them? Yes, Dr. Gray and Maya were the only two that went into the room. Hold on, we can't have the defense testifying against its own client. Anyway, folks, only the two of them went into the channeling chamber, you hear? But you knew that from the very beginning, didn't you? Witness, continue. I didn't get healed between rounds? God damn. <laughs> Was it really a gunshot? Are you insane? You must have heard it as well. Ugh. Why don't you testify for the court, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Was it really a gunshot? Yes, I think it was something that sounded like a gunshot. And why are we here listening to the defense testify? And the world just becomes a little crueler. I heard a gunshot a long time ago, so I know. And I tell you, that was a gunshot I heard. Now this, this is where the story heats up. Mr. Lawyer there broke the door down. We rushed into the room. So let me get this straight. This lawyer there broke the door down. Honestly, Mr. Phoenix Wright, why don't you tell us what happened then? Uh, yes, Miss Von Karma, I broke the door down. Sorry. Why does this feel like an inquisition? No need for apologizing. That was great. You were a real man. Oh, really? That's something I would have liked to see. The judge is smiling rather openly. I'll take that as a good sign. And what did you see when she broke in? Are you sure it was the defendant by a fate? Sure, I'm sure. Lada seems awfully confident in her testimony. Press harder. Lada, please, think back to the day one more time. What you getting at? Remember what you said when we broke into the room? Yeah, 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 we know. Click. Yeah, 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 we know, we know. When you saw the murderer at the time, you couldn't even tell if it was Maya Fey or not, am I correct? Uh, well, you see... Order, Miss Hart. You are here to present an accurate testimony. Ah, yeah, sorry. Good, the shift sinks back to my side. For a defense lawyer, your defense is terribly lacking, Mr. Phoenix Wright. 
Witness, think back to when those two entered the channeling chamber. When they entered? One of those people that entered the chamber was Maya Fey, correct? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it was Maya that went in. Hmm. It looks like we've come to a collective conclusion. The person in this picture is most certainly Maya Fey. Exactly. Rats, and I'm trapped like one again. Ah, fuck, I didn't click on the right thing. Uh... Are you absolutely certain of that? Sure am, but that old witch chased us out of the room, so... Old witch? Does she mean Morgan Fay? Well, there was no one else in there, you know it. The channeling chamber was very dark, almost pitch black. Was there really no one else in there? What about... Behind the folding screen? What about behind the folding screen? Did you check back there? Wreck and give- Wreck given? What in the... Wreck given! You know, you reckon? That's a given. I took a good look around the room once. There ain't no way anyone was hanging out behind that folding screen. The thing is, we already know about a basket that teleported between these events, don't we? So what probably actually happened was, that wasn't Maya at all. That was actually Eeny Meeny. Maya was unconscious in the chest behind the folding screen. When the shot hit the fo when it hit the folding screen, it probably actually just also went into the basket and hit Maya's co coat in there. If I may have a word with you, Miss Hart. What, you got a problem? Rick given? I mean, I'm having a little difficulty understanding you. If you would stop saying such things as wreck and get ah! Now then, Mr. Phoenix Wright, do you see a problem with the testimony or don't you? Enough. It seems there are no issues with Miss Hart's testimony. At the time of the crime, only the two people were in the channeling chamber. The victim, Dr. Turner Gray, and the defendant, Maya Fay. Hmm. No, back there. The face of the defendant cannot be verified in this picture. However, if we were to think about the circumstances, it would have to be the defendant. What am I going to do if I just let this go? What is it, Mr. Wright? You look as if you have something to say. If I make one real move here, is there anything I, anything I can present that would prove it's not Maya in that photo? What would I present in that case? Hmm... Can I get a better look at the... Uh... uh can I get a better look at the photo than this? Is there a way to, like, get rid of the text box? Can I, see, like, I want to try and see the arm from this. Do any of these buttons do that? That doesn't... Hmm... Uh... Well, I've pushed a lot of keys and nothing seems to have worked. I want to know if you can see her sleeve. Uh, wait, was this- is this in the court record? Oh, it is. Can't really see the sleeve. Well, there is a problem that the room looks like it's in a different configuration because the hole in the folding screen is supposed to be around here. But it seems pretty impossible to have shot it like that, given this giant plant is in the way of where the hole would be. Fuck it. Let's go. Your Honor. Mr. Wright? It is possible the person in this photo is not the defendant. Well, how do you know what you're proposing? Y yeah that's just plain fool's talk. Thanks, guys. Your show of support was just great. Now then, Mr. Wright, please show the court some proof. Do I present the bullet hole? I'm not very confident about this. Take 
Here is your proof. Is there a problem? Ah, yes. That's fair enough. I wasn't super confident about that. Because although you can, like, see something in the way of the hole, it also just seemed like the kind of thing the game would probably gloss over, and that was the case. Maybe it is can't present anything yet. Will this show me the other photo? Well, Mr. Wright? Nothing, Your Honor. That's very smart of you, Mr. Phoenix Wright. You really should give up trying to prove Maya is not this photo. Trying to prove this is not Maya Fey. I didn't say anything about giving up. I just don't have the evidence, the right piece of evidence to prove my argument. That's enough. Is this it? Is this all I could do? I think it's quite obvious this court has a verdict of not guilty is not possible. I told you. Totally, 100% impossible. Miss Von Karma, do you have any further questions for this witness? Having established the defendant's guilt, further questioning won't be needed. What about the defense? No further questions, I presume? I couldn't protect Maya. The defense... The defense... Phoenix. Phoenix, you can't make that kind of face. A lawyer is someone who smiles, no matter how bad it gets. Mia? Guess I made it just in time, wouldn't you say? But you... But pearls! I don't like when she's in Pearl's body very much. Her clothes are a bit small. Anyway, what are you waiting for, Phoenix? Let's go. But how? She's already taken every advantage. The advantage is still in your hand. Think carefully one more time about what you saw in the channeling chamber. Do you remember what you told me yesterday? Dr. Gray! Click. Yes, she's taken two photos. You see, there's one final piece of this puzzle. Mia, got a question Lada one more time, Phoenix. I don't know why I said it, but that's not what she said. I don't know if she's doing it subconsciously or on purpose, but she's not testifying truthfully. Now then, this court would like to end this cross-examination period. Please wait, Your Honor. The defense would like to request that the witness testify one more time. Overruled. I'm afraid you're too late, Mr. Wright. The cross-examination has already ended. Furthermore, any unrelate- Ah! It's fine, I'll allow another testimony. Avon Karma's case is perfect, absolutely flawless. And what better time than this for you to see that? But I mean, I have some plays I must go after. Mmm, alright, I'll allow it. Thank goodness that she's gonna Vegeta herself. Is the classic let him cook. Oh no, what have I done? How are you giving up the testimony? Well, what am I supposed to talk about? Please tell us one more time, once more, what happened when you burst into the channeling chamber. Okay, you got it. See, you got through to the judge somehow, right? Well, not really. It was Von Karma's whip that got through to him. When we broke into that room, all I could focus on was Maya. I was uh, kind of scared of the dead body, so I didn't take a good look at it. I'm really bad when it comes to blood and ghosts and stuff, but I still managed to point my camera at Maya and take a shot. Nothing sounds different from before. Some parts of her testimony were very vague. I should press on those. Struggle all you like, the taste of your bitterness of, as you like. Taste the bitterness of your defeat. Well, amuse me with your useless questions, Mr. Phoenix Wright. I'm waiting. Well, immediately we press on the photo because she actually took two. Two, right? Two what? Two shots. You took two shots. But only one has been submitted as evidence. Miss Hart, where is the other picture you are withholding? No, 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 you got it all wrong. It's not me. I didn't mean anything bad. I know I can be a little mean, but I ain't evil. Well, at least she knows herself. Then why have you not shown this other picture? Well, ain't that obvious? The prosecutor woman told me to shut my trap about it. Which means that it's got something in it that is not good. <laughs> what? Von... Von Karma? 
M -m 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 Miss Von Karma, you you're hiding critical evidence. Unforgivable Von Karma. Suppressing evidence like this, you're as bad as your father. Confront. Your Honor, the defense asked the prosecutor Von Karma be held in contempt of court. Well, yeah. Mm. Me, in contempt of court? You can't be serious. But you had, you hid evidence from the court on purpose. That's, that's... That's not fair. Phoenix, are you a lawyer or a school, ch school child? I was so angry I lost my composure. Miss Von Karma, would you care to explain yourself to the court? I thought this picture was not important and thus felt no need to submit it. That's all. How could you think the pictures were more or less the same, so why bother with the second? I mean, it's just so much more trouble than it's worth for me to submit this as evidence. More trouble than it's worth? How, how can you say that? If you want to see it that badly, I'll submit it. Oh, look! What are you doing? Oh, there's no hole in the sleeves. What is... What is this picture? It's obviously the second picture the witness took the day of the scene of the crime. Well, it's a little off-center, but that's what you get with a nervous amateur. I think the po important po point here is the person in the picture. This is most definitely not my Fay. I actually remember this really vividly, what she's about to do. Because it's so fucking absurd that she doesn't immediately get thrown out of the courtroom. What is the meaning of this? This might be the break I was looking for. Now should I... I know what's gonna happen, but come on, it's gotta be insist it's not Meyer. Your Honor. As you complain, you see the person in the picture is not my F.A. Uh, yes, I see that. It's not just her face, her whole body has taken on a different appearance. There's only one conclusion that can be drawn, then. That somehow, uh, this per other person snuck in and traded places with the defendant. Order, order, order. Well, yes, I believe you are correct, Mr. Wright. The person who was inside the channeling chamber was not my F.A. Mia, we did it. You're too soft. Huh? You're softer than Aunt Morgan's stro strawberry desserts, Phoenix. Take a look at Prosecutor Von Karma's face. She's smiling. I think you had better continue to worry, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Miss Von Karma, what do you mean by that? Your Honor, I would like for you to take a look at this picture. This was taken yesterday at the detention center vis visitor's room. Detention center's visitor room. This is Phoenix Wright and the defendant Maya Fay during his visit. Maya Fay, but isn't this a totally different person? She looks this way because she's obviously in the middle of channeling a spirit. Now, no, though, what you're doing is using the defendant <laughs> speaking with their lawyer as evidence, which is not allowed, but it's unbelievable that she can, yet it is the truth. When Maya Fey is in this state, she physically changes into the person she's calling. Miss Von Karma, a word if I may, Mia. Taking picture of someone during a private visit is illegal. Surely you must know that that picture can't be submitted as evidence. Obviously, I know this picture is illegal. But I never intended to submit it as evidence in the first place. Isn't this fucking ridiculous that she doesn't just get thrown out of the courtroom now? <laughs> like, what is she? From the moment I showed this picture to the court, this case became all, became all mine. After all, this image has now been forever burned into the judge's mind. Your Honor, this is fucking ridiculous. <laughs> I don't have even a single witty line. It looks like we've been had. I don't claim to understand this, and I still cannot believe it. Are you saying that this person, this person is the defendant Maya Fey? If I give up here, the trial will end. But if I slip up and say something wrong, it will cost me. Yes, I can prove it. Your Honor. Oh, the fire has returned to your eyes, I see. This picture. Within this picture lies a critical contradiction to, sh to the testimony- all the testimony up until now. A contradiction? So you think you spotted a problem with this picture? Then earn your keep. It's the left sleeve. Take that! Please direct your attention here. 
to the sleeve, but there's nothing odd about it. And that is exactly what is so odd. Something that should be there is suddenly missing. Should be there? Ah! There was a bullet hole in the sleeve of the defendant's costume. If that's the case, then it should be in this picture as well. Miss Von Karma, you... You intend to hide this valuable piece of evidence? You will most certainly be assigned a penalty for this. She should be removed from the trial, Your Honor. This has been ridiculous, but no, that won't happen. All right, this should do major damage to her argument. Don't celebrate yet. You like to bring down the mood, don't you? Take a look at Miss Von Karma's face. Ah, she's got that condescending grin plastered all over her face again. Tisk tisk, jumping the gun again, I see, Your Honor. I would like to extend an apology on behalf of those incompetent fools. W what do you mean, and what incompetent fools? If those fools down at the precinct hadn't missed the bullet hole, I would have gotten a report about it. As I didn't, I could not have known that this picture was of any value to this case. I see. She's lying through her teeth, I know it. That woman knew about everything. The bullet hole, the picture, everything. But you can't prove that. Right? No, but she presented an illegal photograph, <laughs> you know. Von Siska's Von Kama's idea of a perfect case is quite fascinating, don't you think? Your Honor, you need not worry. If you must assign a penalty, I'll personally make sure that detective gets what's coming. I'm sure there will be a great gnashing of teeth at his next salary discussion. Poor Gumshoe. In any case, this is a very big problem. When the defendant was taken into custody, her costume had a bullet hole in its sleeve. However, from this photo, it would appear that right after the shooting, there was none. The judge is confused by this strange twist of events. This is your chance, Phoenix. Load all you've got into this one shot, alright? Got it. Your Honor, there's only one logical conclusion for the contradiction. The shooter is someone else. The defendant's sleeve had a bullet hole in it. However, this person's clearly does not. There can only be one explanation. The person who had shot Dr. Gray was not the defendant, but a different person altogether. What? Order, order, order. If order is not restored, I will suspend this trial. Ow! Ah! Why me? The defense's... The defense's argument is a complete mess. A complete mess? I fail to see how. Please enlighten us. Hey, witness! Ah, what the heck? Is there any way to ask Gal a favor? Be quiet, you! You were the one who said it was only the two of them when you entered the room. Well, you know, if you were lying, I swear that my whip will be the last thing you see. L look, sis, you're looking mighty scary, so why don't we use... Ah! I swear I wasn't lying or nothing. There wasn't anyone else in there, honest. You see, now riddle me this, Mr. Phoenix, right? When did the defendant where did the defendant where did the defendant vanish to? And where did this other person appear from? Um, why is it lately all I want to do is cry? Well, if the person in this picture is not the defendant, then this poses two big questions. First, where did the defendant vanish to? And second, where did this person come from? That's right. Now hurry up and answer, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Come on, you can't fall apart here, Phoenix. I can't believe that even Mia's calling me by my full name. I mean, how am I supposed to prove something like that? Had enough yet, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Or did you think you have enough to turn in thing? Or do you think you have enough to turn... Enough in you to turn things around even now? To turn things around? That's right. Maya always said turn things around and change your perspective. Phoenix? So where did this intruder appear from and when did Maya disappear to? I need to look at this situation from a different angle. Let's see. What if before we broke in, the third person was already in the room? And what if Maya had left that room somehow? If I could prove that either of those conditions were true... Mr. Wright, let's hear what you've come up with. I think what happened before we were forced our way into the channeling chamber is clear. 
a third person had entered it. Your Honor, I would like to present some evidence. I have proof there was someone else in the room before the murder took place. That's not what I expected him to say. And now I've been thrown off. Because my... I was going to present this, but he's phrased the, the statement in a way that makes me think that's not actually going to work. Having considered it, it might be option two. So I said, oh, Maya hasn't left the room. We do have to reckon with this key, though, don't we? Because this key is supposed to be one of a kind, and yet... Pearl had it. Right. Which would indicate that it was outside of the channeling chamber at some point. Which means that Maya got moved, but how does that work? Because we were all outside the channeling chamber and we never saw this go by. Or rather, we never saw that, like, whisker, wicker basket go by. Is this gonna be some sh- Ugh, Look, I- Is it like, oh, she wasn't in the room, she was in the box behind the thing? Is that what we're going for? I think it might be this, because we also are supposed to be presenting this key at some point during the trial, aren't we? It's not the key here, right? No. Okay. We're going back. We are going back. We're picking Maya had left the room. Maya had left the channeling chamber at some point, and the defense can prove this. Oh, how a foolish fool makes a foolish face while dreaming foolishly foolish dreams. Maya Fay was being looked after by her aunt, Morgan Fay. The chances of her leaving the crime scene is lower than that detective's salary. Let's see some evidence. Proof that the, from the murder until the time of arrest, the defendant had left the room. I suppose I don't actually remember. Did we wait, like, literally outside of the chamber door, or did we fully leave the manor while we were waiting? Because then that becomes much easier to explain this if we fully left the manor. We did, didn't we? We went out onto the street. So, yes. Miss Hart, do you remember this key? The problem I was having was I was thinking of it... I was thinking of the question wrong, which was... Trying to prove that Maya had left the room before we knocked the door down. No, it's just I, after we left is when Maya had left the room. Well, I seen it. Hey, that's the channeling chamber key. Before the channeling started, Maya locked the door from inside with that. The defendant herself locked the door. Yeah, that's why we all couldn't get the door open. That key's only one of its kind, after all. Oh, one of a kind, you say? Wait, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Yes, it looks like she's catching on. I'm afraid to ask, but... Why is that key currently in your possession? Huh? What do you mean? If Maya Fey locked herself in, then the key should have been with her. Yes, agreed. However, she did not have the key at her time of her arrest. Ah, well ain't that a kick. So how come you're holding it? I got this from a pre as a present from a certain little girl. And that little girl was nowhere near the crime scene at the time. Th that's preposterous. That means that Maya Fey must have left the room. If she had not, then I would not be holding this key you see before you. No. It seems we have come to an impasse. This picture has clearly captured the face of the murderer. However, is this... However, is this person the defendant or not? 
The defense is arguing that this person is not the defendant. Furthermore, as proof, this key has been submitted as evidence. Miss Von Karma. How can this be? At this point in time, a verdict on the defense's guilt is not possible. My perfect case! How is there a flaw in my perfect case? Don't think you've won yet, Mr. Phoenix Wright. I'm a prodigy, I have never lost a case, and I don't intend to lose here in this courtroom to a fool like you. I don't care what I have to do, I will get my guilty verdict. That's enough. If you would like to continue, do so in the lobby. Court will reconvene tomorrow at 10 a.m. That is all. Court is adjourned. Wow! That was you, Pearly? You summoned my sis? Yes, I felt I had no choice. Great going, Pearly. I knew you were special. Hey, Nick, did you know? Uh, yeah, it's not like anyone else in there could have done that. Hmm, Nick. I know you're trying really hard and all, but... I really don't remember ever leaving that room. Yeah, you were unconscious, that's okay. And I don't think that a third person could have gone into that room. Yeah, they could. Yeah... Well, at least we have until tomorrow to think of things out. Like what happened in that room, for instance. Yeah, I'm counting on you. Oh, I envy the two of you. Oh, by the way, Nick, do you think you could take Pearly back home for me? Sure. All right, Pearls, you ready to go buy some tickets? Huh? A ticket? Poor thing, so sheltered. All right, what a disaster, but we got there in the end. That's okay, they can't all be flawless.